Your Honour, if it pleases the court, my name is Collie, initials JC, and I appear on behalf of the Crown. The co accused Gareth and Lara have been charged with doing grievous bodily harm against the complainant Maud, pursuant to section 320, subsection 1 of the Criminal Code. As the offence took place in Queensland, Queensland legislation will thus apply as according to section 79 of the Judiciary Act 1903. The Crown submits an application under section 590 AA subsection 2E of the Criminal Code to seek a ruling on the competence and compelability of the witnesses Gareth, Lara, Trent, Maud and Sally. The Crown's second submission, Your Honour, will request that despite the lack of a relevant search warrant, the court should not exercise any discretion to exclude the CCTV evidence obtained, taking into consideration the public policy factors considered in Bunning and Cross. The Crown will now begin our first submission. As this is a joint trial, the co-accused Gareth and Lara prima facie are not competent to give evidence for the Crown, according to Payne, as the Evidence Act Queensland or the QEA is silent. Section 8.1 of the QEA allows Gareth and Lara to be competent but not compelable to give evidence against the other accused if it is on behalf of the defence. Therefore, the Crown wishes to seek an order for separate trials for Gareth and Lara. This discretion would allow in a criminal proceeding for both spouses of the accused to be competent and compelable to give evidence either for the Crown or for the defence, as per Section 8.2 of the QEA, no consent necessary of the accused. The Crown then seeks a ruling on the second witness, Trent. Your Honour, the Crown understands that in conjunction with Trent's age, there are potential issues with his mental capacity as he is on the autistic spectrum. We bring to your attention Section 9 of the QEA, which presumes every person, including a child, is competent to give evidence. Trent is classed as a, as a child for purposes of Section 21 AD, subsection A2 of the QEA, as he is only 10 years old. Additionally, if it is the court's opinion, Trent is competent to give evidence if he can provide an intelligible account of events pursuant to Section 9A of the QEA. Furthermore, Section 9C states expert evidence can be used to decide if Trent is competent if it is required. The Crown submits that Trent is able to provide an intelligible account of the events he saw from hiding behind the laundry door. The Crown also implores Your Honour to consider the vitality of this evidence as he saw the whole circumstance unfold. For Trent to have competency when giving evidence under oath, he would need to understand that the serious of the matter and that the obligation to tell the truth is above and beyond the ordinary duty, as according to section 9b of the QEA. Despite his age and mental impairment, the Crown asserts Trent is competent to give evidence under oath as he is able to communicate and collaborate satisfactorily with investigators. However, should your honour decide otherwise, probative value of the evidence does not decrease as is pursuant to section 9D subsection 2. Because Trent is a vulnerable witness, according to section 9E of the QEA, relevant provisions dealing with child witnesses will need to be followed if it is decided that he is competent. Pursuant to section 21AC of the QEA, Trent is an affected child as he is a relevant witness to the proceedings and he is not a defendant. The Crown understands any trauma should be limited and accommodations will need to be adopted as the court sees fit, should Your Honour deem Trent competent. In relation to Maud, the Crown submits prima facie that she is a competent and compelable witness to give evidence against Gareth and Laura, pursuant to Section 9 of the QEA. Your Honour, some issues may be present due to concerns for Maud's cognitive abilities, but similar to Trent, I refer you to Sections 9A and 9C. Additionally, due to Maud's physical injuries, her pre-existing physical impairments and her cognitive abilities, Maud is classified as a special witness pursuant to section 21A subsection 1 of the QEA and is likely to be disadvantaged of a witness because of the reasons just listed. Similar to Trent, should she be ruled as competent and compelable accommodations will need to be adopted as the court sees fit. To move on to the final witness, Your Honour, Sally is prima facie presumed to be competent by virtue of section 9 of the QEA. With competency comes compellability, as is the common law rule in Hoskin. Therefore, Sally is competent and compellable. The Crown's second submission requests, Your Honour, to not exercise any discretion in excluding the CCTV evidence found on the mobile phone, despite the lack of a necessary search warrant pursuant to Section 150 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act Queensland. The Crown refers to Bunning and Cross, which discusses the protections of the integrity of the criminal system. 
Unlawful evidence can be obtained at too high of a risk. However, this does not make it inadmissible. The non-exhaustive test in Bunning and Cross, as discussed by Justices Stephen and Aiken, can be applied. Firstly, in regards to whether the conduct was a genuine mistake or a deliberate breach of law, the Crown asserts it was a deliberate breach of law, Your Honour. Constable Joan, as a man of his position, should understand that a warrant would be needed. Secondly, as this was a deliberate breach of law, cogency can then not be taken into account. There was no pressing need for Constable Jones to have responded in such a way, as the footage was not perishable. The risk of Gareth deleting the footage, while apparent, is low, as Gareth told Constable Jones where the file for the CCTV were kept and where his phone was. To then consider the gravity of the crime committed, grievous bodily harm is a serious crime carrying a serious sentence. A walking stick was used to batter and bruise a woman, not only injuring Maud, but exposing her grandchildren Trent and Sally to a traumatic event. The Crown asserts the CCTV footage evidence is integral and vital to the Crown's case. This is only elevated when considering the vulnerability of the witnesses identified, as Trent is a mentally impaired child and Maud is a special witness. Additionally, this is the only evidence which fully captures the entire event. Therefore, the potential detriment to the co-accused is minimal in comparison. Finally, the purpose of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act is to prevent this type of conduct when evidence is being gathered. Therefore, Constable Jones's conduct did breach this statute. However, due to the cruciality of the evidence that the evidence holds to the Crown's case and the vulnerability of the witnesses, the Crown implores Your Honour to not offer any discretion to exclude this evidence, therefore allowing it to remain admissible. This concludes the submission for the Crown, Your Honour.